Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe for me? That way you always know when I drop a new episode and it will be easier for other people to find my channel and to become better read makers and happier musicians. Thank you. So I'm coming in today with what may be a surprising opinion coming from me, the person who has been recording weekly video content for years about the absolute tiniest details of oboe reed making. I don't think the reed matters that much. It is not uncommon at all that when I am teaching an oboe lesson or when I am coaching an oboist, something will go awry and immediately they'll say, oh, this reed, this reed is terrible. And they'll change reeds, they'll putter around, they'll pull out a knife, they'll start messing around. And I have to remind them, play the oboe, not the reed. Play the oboe, not the reed. Sometimes this gets to me as well. I was in a recording session last week and there's something about a recording session where you are hyper aware of the perfection of your playing because you know that you are individually miked in this quite small ensemble, right? The ensemble is probably going to get boosted in post-production to include multiple violins and violas and cellos, but you know, in the room is just me and a couple of people and you, I can get very, very hyper aware of exactly what sound is coming out of my instrument. And, you know, you, I see notes like low Fs, low Es, and articulations on them in piano and pianissimo dynamics. And that is a dangerous thing for an oboist. And it's not really my specialty. I can get around on there, sure, but I tend to play things that are higher, that are more soloistic. I tend to be a principal oboe. And so I got in my head about these entrances a little bit. I started to like tense up. I started to be very aware of the inside of my mouth. Like exactly what do I have to do with this reed? And my focus was on the reed. How can I, what do I need to do to make this reed play that note? Right? And I don't know if that feeling is familiar to you at all. That feeling of, okay, everything depends on exactly how my tongue interacts with this reed and exactly what I'm gonna need to do to make it come out without like barking and without squawking and without missing. How do I, how do I make this reed play that note? And as I was sitting there like sort of in my head and spiraling about my reed, my reed, I did grab another reed out of my case and I threw it in water in case I needed to change. But then I also gave myself a little pep talk and I'm like, Janet, you know better than this. Let's play the oboe, not the reed. And at that point, I got back in touch with my voicing, the way that I know how to play the instrument. I started thinking about that low F. And, you know, if you're used to thinking about an oboe as something that you interact with right here, you might not really be thinking about the fact that an F is exactly this long. The F speaks right there, and that is maybe, what, six, 12, like 15 or so inches from my face. So all of that obsession that's happening for me inside my mouth about this little tiny piece of damp wood and exactly how my tongue is going to impact this little tiny piece of damp wood is a little bit irrelevant if when I realize when I remember that everything that's about to ha to sound is happening 15 inches away from my face so to that end if instead of thinking about this little thing happening up here I think about how much I how, what an f feels like how much air needs to be inside the oboe in order to make a low f speak how um directed versus diffuse that air needs to be so thinking about like using warm air versus cold air um when i think about supporting it from like inside my 
grown-up human body, then suddenly, instead of using only the air that exists between my cheeks and obsessing about this little micro thing, I can go, ha, ah, and play in the way that I know tends to encourage a good low F. I'm playing the oboe, not the reed. Is it technically still true that the air is coming up my air column through the reed 15 inches down to the oboe? Absolutely. But if I think about that, and if I think about this micro moment happening inside my mouth, I am much less likely to have success because I'm only using a tiny amount of air and a ton of like brain power. And brain power is not the thing that makes music. Instead, Just now, I played that note, and then even after the, I played that note, I found myself sinking into it and like finding where it really lives. And once I have found that, I can go back to it over and over again. Sometimes I even pretend that the air is traveling directly from, let's see if the F is right about here on my body, but let's say I'm standing here. If that's where that F lives, I pretend that I'm just sending it directly out from my sternum to the room. And it doesn't have anything to do with the reed, actually. Do we have to have a reed that basically functions in order to... Uh, successfully play the oboe. Of course, like the reed has to do the basic tasks of a reed. It has to vibrate in a predictable way. It has to uh, respond. It has to have a certain amount of stability and flexibility. All of the things that we ordinarily talk about. Reeds are not unimportant. And, you know, that is why I have this YouTube channel. That is why I have Reed Club every Monday night. And we talk about, like, mm, my reed is doing this thing. What can I, how can I scrape to improve that? It's not unimportant. It is a part of our job to, like, create reeds and make them work for us. But once we're in a performance situation or a recording situation or even in a practicing situation, the much more interesting question is how do I play the oboe on this like basic B minus level Joe Reed. How do I play the oboe? Play the oboe, not the reed, and see how that expands your mindset. See how much easier it feels to use your actual air and direct it through the oboe. Of course, the even more expanded corollary, which I may talk about in a future episode, is you can play the music, not the oboe. Play the oboe, not the reed. Play the music, not the oboe. Actu because actually you are the music and it all comes from inside you. This has been a five minute read maker discussion. You can follow these short videos here on YouTube. You can subscribe if you wish. I hope you will. If you need to, reach me to order Reeds or Cane, to order a copy of my book, The Happiest Musician, to talk with me about this concept or about uh, anything else that I talk about here on this channel. You can find me at JanetIngle.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.